Hi folks, welcome back. I hope you're all doing well. I saw this paper on Hacker News and it was really interesting, so I want to spend some time talking about it. What they're trying to do in this paper is take a class of problem that initially is too difficult for the model to solve. But then they're teaching the model to solve that problem and they're using the model itself to do that teaching. And the way they do that is by constructing simpler versions of that same difficult problem and teaching the model to solve that simpler version and then all the way up to the original hard version. So that's what they mean by recursive problem decomposition. And they achieve some very interesting results. The specific problem they're looking at is integration, mathematical integration. And what they did was they started with Llama 3.2 3B. So this is a very small model. A 3B model can easily run even on a phone, definitely any modern laptop. And its accuracy on this task, namely integration, went from 1% on just the base model by itself all the way to 82% by using the ladder technique that they're describing here. And so that's a really impressive jump. And let's take a look at how they're achieving that. They're using a twist on reinforcement learning. And the key insight they have is, as they say here, for RL to really work, you need a smooth increasing gradient of task difficulty. So you need a sequence of tasks that start simple and then gradually go up in difficulty. Then the question becomes, well, how do you construct the sequence of gradually more difficult problems? And that is the key contribution of the paper. The reason they mention self-improvement in the title is that they're using the model itself to generate these simpler problems that it can learn from and then build up to solving the original difficult problem. Let's look at a concrete example to make this clearer. In this paper, they're focusing on mathematical integration. And here you can see, starting with a really difficult original problem, they are constructing a tree of progressively simpler problems. So the simplest ones are at the bottom. The key here is that the simpler ones at the bottom are solvable by the model, whereas the difficult one at the top is not. It's beyond the model's reach. But by doing reinforcement learning on these simpler models and then the slightly harder models at the level above it and so on, you can teach the model to build up all the way to solving this really difficult problem at the top. And the cool thing about their ladder technique is that this decomposition, this construction of the simpler problems is also done by the LLM itself. The important thing you really need, apart from variant generation, is some quick way to verify the solution to a problem. Now note that for a problem like this, or most mathematical problems, you can quickly check if the answer to an integration problem is correct by doing some numerical integration and checking on a few ranges. It's interesting how they got these simpler problems. The first thing that comes to mind, which is just prompting the LLM to generate easier versions, in their experience, doesn't lead to good variants. And so what they did was something much more nuanced and specialized. And this is specific to this problem. So they first came up with a set of transformations that could be applied to integration problems. Things like reducing the exponents or simplifying denominators. And so they have a library of transformations that can take a difficult integral and turn it into a slightly simpler one. And then they have a bunch of these tricks which help them get good variants with these transformations. Things like using a batch size of 10, which they found was just right. 
doing temperature cycling, which means changing the temperature between 0.8 and 1.4. And all this was so that they get a good diversity of problem variants that they can bootstrap the RL with. I thought this was really funny. They used persona-based prompting, things like think like Euler or approach this problem as if you were Gauss. And then, of course, verification is important because that's what gives you your reward signal. If you can get a solution, that is correct. And in the case of integration, you can do numerical verification. And they basically did this on some randomly sampled points where they evaluated this integral numerically. And then they use a variant of GRPO, Group Relative Policy Optimization. This is the thing that DeepSeek R1 used to do the reinforcement learning. All right, and the results they got were pretty astounding. So they started with Llama 3B, which is a tiny model. It's not very capable by itself at all. And you can see the comparison in this graph. So the base model, the Llama model by itself, can barely solve any of these difficult integration problems, even when you measure pass at 10. Even if you do some reinforcement learning without the kinds of variant generation that they've done in this paper, it gets only up to 3%. But with this ladder technique, where you're generating simpler versions of problems and moving up the chain of difficulty, they get a score of 82%. They also tried this on a Quen 7B model, which is twice as big, more than twice as big as Llama 3B, but still a pretty small model, something that could easily run on a laptop. And even on that, you can see how the 7B model beats out much larger cutting edge models like Claude or 4O and comes within striking distance of O1. O1 is 80% and ladder is at 73%. And so what does this tell us? As the authors are saying, this demonstrates the genuine acquisition of new mathematical abilities. And you know this because RL without this variant generation technique still gets very low success rates. And so that tells us that this success is the high success rate is coming from the way that these gradually increasing in difficulty problems are constructed and then being used for reinforcement learning. Now, of course, this paper focused on one particular problem class, numerical integration. But the point is that you can apply the same approach to other tasks that have the same shape, which is that you have some notion of when a solution is correct, and more importantly, what they call a generator verifier gap, where it's easy to check the solution compared to generating the solution itself. And there are many problems which fall into this category where solving the problem is hard, but once you have a solution, checking that it is correct is relatively straightforward. Things like solving really difficult programming challenges. You could easily run unit tests to check for correctness. Or even very difficult unsolved problems in math. Because if you express it in a formal theorem proving language like Lean, you can then just execute the theorem prover on your proposed proof to check for correctness. So this general pattern is very widely applicable, especially to reasoning and mathematical kinds of problems. So that was a quick look at this reinforcement learning technique that can improve the success rate of even small models on very difficult problems by gradually teaching them up to that level of difficulty. I hope you enjoyed that. If you like content like this, please consider subscribing, like the video, and I will see you next time. Thank you very much.